Hey, this is Presh Talwalkar. This problem was suggested to me by email by Arbitrary Renaissance, who also thoughtfully provided the background to the problem. Very often when people suggest problems to me, I reply back and I ask for the context. Where was the problem asked and what tools were expected to be used to solve the problem? This problem was asked in the Fall 2016 Online Math Olympiad. This is a math contest for high schoolers that's offered in the fall and the spring. Teams of up to four people answer 30 questions in 11 days. Only a basic four function calculator is allowed. Each question is worth one point and the average score for this test was nine. So even these very talented high school students who took the test were only able to solve on average about one third of the questions. Now the very top score was 29, which means this person answered almost all the questions, which is truly incredible because they are fairly difficult questions. I have reworded problem 16 from the test as follows. At the end of day zero, six magical seeds are planted. On each day following, each seed has a chance to magically transform into an apple tree with a probability of one half. Once a seed transforms into an apple tree, it stays an apple tree and survives indefinitely. What is the expected number of days until all six seeds have become apple trees? Write your answer as a fraction m over n where m and n are relatively prime. Can you figure it out? Give this problem a try, and when you're ready, keep watching the video for the solution. So let's get started by translating the problem into some of the mathematical details. So the first sentence just tells us that there are six seeds that we need to consider. The next sentence tells us the transition probability. The probability that each seed turns into a tree on day i equals one half. The third sentence tells us just the detail we need to know for the problem, that once a seed is a tree, it stays a tree forever. So we can disregard this sentence. We'll just keep that into account as we do the calculation. Finally, we need to know the expected number of days until all six seeds are trees. So we want to figure out the expectation of the number of days until we have six trees. In this video, I'll present two different solutions. I'll first go over the official solution, which starts from the definition of expected value. Then I'll present my own solution, which uses a trick to solve in simple equations. These are formally known as Markov chains and recurrence relations, but you don't need to know the jargon to use this method. In fact, if you've been watching my videos, you may already know this method. So let's go through these two different solution methods. The official solution starts out as follows. We'll write n to equal the number of days until there are six trees. We want to calculate e of n. By the definition of expected value, e of n equals one times the probability n equals one, plus two times the probability n equals two, plus three times the probability n equals three, and so on. The official solution then has the very next line. E of n equals the probability that n is greater than or equal to one, plus the probability n is greater than or equal to two, plus the probability n is greater than or equal to three, and so on. Now, I've taken several probability courses, and I work on many probability puzzles, but this form of the expected value is not something I've seen. But apparently in contest mathematics, it must be very common because they just went ahead and said, this is the second line of the proof. But where does it come from? So let's derive this. Luckily, Arbitrary Renaissance sent me a more detailed solution write-up, which showed where this came from. And it's actually an interesting little derivation. So the trick is to rewrite the expectation as follows. Let's consider the second term two times the probability n equals two. We can write this in a stacked form 
of two terms of the probability n equals 2. The next term, 3 times the probability n equals 3, we can write this in stacked form as three terms of the probability n equals 3. Now notice the pattern will continue. The next term will have four terms that are stacked up, the term after that will have five terms, and so on. Each subsequent term will have one more stacked term. So now we have the expectation as sort of a triangular series of summations. The very first summation will be the probability n equals 1, plus the probability n equals 2, plus the probability n equals 3, and so on. And notice this is equal to the probability n is greater than or equal to 1. What's the second line? Well, this starts out at n equals 2, so it will be the probability n is greater than or equal to 2. The third line will be the probability n is greater than or equal to 3, and now you'll see where the pattern comes from. So this is why the expectation of n is equal to the probability that n is greater than or equal to 1, plus the probability n is greater than or equal to 2, and so on. So how do we go from here? Well, we need to figure out each of these terms. So we'll first deduce that the probability that n is greater than or equal to k will equal 1 minus the probability n is less than or equal to k minus 1. This is by the complement rule of probability. This is because it will be easier to deal with the probability that n is less than or equal to k minus 1. This is the probability that all six seeds become trees by day k minus 1. So in order to figure this out, we'll also consider the complement probability. The probability that a seed is not a tree by day k minus 1 will equal 1 half to the power of k minus 1. This is because on each of the k days, there's a 1 half chance that the seed does not transform into a tree on that day, so we need to multiply 1 half k minus 1 times. Therefore, the probability a seed is a tree by day k minus 1 will be the complement 1 minus this. And now we need to consider six different trees. So we need to take this particular probability and have a product across six different seeds because each seed turning into a tree is an independent event. So the probability that all six seeds are trees by day k minus 1 will be 1 minus 1 half to the power of k minus 1, and we want this entire thing to be raised to the power of 6. So we now know the probability that n is less than or equal to k minus 1, and we need to know 1 minus this. So how can we simplify from here? Well, notice we have a binomial, so we can expand this using the binomial theorem. Now you have to be very careful when doing this, so I'll show you the full derivation of all the steps. We'll first use the binomial theorem. We have the binomial coefficient times 1 raised to some power times the other term, negative 1 half, to the power of k minus 1 raised to 6 minus that power. So the first thing we can do is all of these powers of 1, 1 to any power will be equal to 1, so these terms will vanish. We can then simplify the binomial coefficients. Now we have negative 1 half to the power of k minus 1 being raised to another power. So we can then simplify this as follows. We're going to have an alternating sum, and the power it's being raised to can go in the denominator. So this will be the expanded form of this term. And now we need to take 1 minus this expanded form. So the very first term is 1, so that'll vanish. And then we're taking 1 minus this, so we'll then reverse the signs on each of the term. So we've now figured out the probability that n is greater than or equal to k is equal to the following six terms. We can furthermore simplify the denominators because we can raise 2 to whatever power was in the denominator. So now how do we figure out the expected value of n? 
Well, the expected value of n is equal to the sum of these probabilities going from one to infinity. Now notice each of these terms is a geometric series that's summed from k going from one to infinity. So we can sum each of these six terms independently and we'll use the formula that the sum of a geometric series is the first term divided by the quantity one minus the common ratio. So the expected value of n is the sum across one to infinity of the following six terms, where each term is a geometric series. So we can evaluate the first term using the formula for the sum of a geometric series. And then we can just do this term by term. So you have to be careful and diligent to just make sure that you get each of these sums correctly. And finally, you now need to evaluate this sum and you may need to make sure to get the fraction correct because you need to leave it as a fraction where the numerator and denominator are relatively prime. So if you do that, you end up with the answer of 7880 divided by 1953. And this is approximately 4.03 days. So that's the official solution and the answer. So it takes about four days for all six seeds to become trees. So this is one way to solve the problem. I thought about it in a different way. I thought about it using recurrence relations. So I thought about it as follows. Let's write E sub K to be the expected number of days to get six trees if there are already K trees. What we want to solve is E sub zero. So let's think about it backwards. Let's imagine we already have six trees. In that case, it's not going to take us any more days to get to six trees. E6 is equal to zero. But what if there were one fewer trees? What if there were just five trees? How many days would it take us to get to six trees? Well, if we have five trees, that means there's one more seed that needs to transform. So after one day, there are two possible things that could happen to that seed. With probability one half, that last seed becomes the sixth tree, so our waiting time is then E6. And with probability one half, that seed remains dormant, so we stay at five trees. But in that case, the expected waiting time will still be E5. So we can write an equation that E5 is equal to one more day plus the two possibilities that can happen with probability of one half. We've solved that E6 is equal to zero. So we have an equation that E5 is equal to one plus one half E5. Therefore, E5 is equal to two. So if we have five trees, it takes about two days to get to six trees. And that makes sense. So now let's go one more step backwards. What is E4? If we have four trees, that means there are two more seeds. So after one day, what could happen to those two seeds? Well, with probability one fourth, both of the seeds will transform to make six trees. With probability two fourths, exactly one of the seeds will transform. So we have five trees. And then the expected waiting time will be the expected waiting time from having five trees, E5. Finally, with probability one fourth, the two seeds will not transform, will stay at four trees, and the expected waiting time will still be E4. So we get the following equation, E4 is equal to one more day plus the following three possibilities. Now we substitute in the values for E6 and E5, and then we can solve this equation for E4. We get E4 is equal to 8 thirds. Now we can continue. What is E3? Well, if we have three trees, that means there are three more seeds. So after one day, there are four possible outcomes. It's as if we are flipping three coins and counting the number of heads. We can either have zero heads, one heads, two heads, or three heads. So we end up with a distribution that's very much like flipping a coin three times. 
and the probabilities will be 1 8 3 8 3 8 and 1 8 either to get to 6 trees, 5 trees, 4 trees, or 3 trees. So we can write out the equation for E3, and since we've solved for E6, E5, and E4, we then have an equation that's just in the one variable, E3. So we can solve that E3 is equal to 22 over 7. Now from here, we continue. We can figure out E2 because that means we have two trees, which means there are four more seeds. So after one day, we have a distribution of five possible outcomes as if we were flipping four coins and counting the number of heads. So I've written out the details in this particular video, but I'm just going to skip ahead in the narration. We're going to end up with the following equation for E2. We can substitute in our values that we've already solved previously, and then we can get that E2 is equal to 368 over 105. Now we need to continue this until we get to E0. So let me just quickly go ahead to the details of E1. We end up with the following equation, and we're going to substitute in our previous values and solve that E1 equals 2470 over 651. So this finally gets us to what we want, which is E0. So if we have zero trees, that means we have all six seeds, then after one day, we have to consider all the possible outcomes. We can get anywhere from six trees to staying at zero trees. So we end up with the following equation. We've already solved for all the previous values. So we have only an equation in E0, which we can then solve that E0 is equal to 7,880 divided by 1953, and that's again approximately 4.03 days. So there are two different ways of going at this problem. In this solution method, you have the added advantage that you get to actually figure out the expected number of days when you have three trees or four trees. So did you figure out this problem and which method did you use to figure it out? Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to my channel. I make videos on math. You can catch me on my blog, Mind Your Decisions. If you like this video, you can check out my books, which are linked in the video description. You can also support me on Patreon. And you can catch me on social media, either at Mind Your Decisions or at Presh Tallwalker, depending on the site.